morning, Bishop Lynch. Today is Wednesday, April 17th, 2013. I'm Liz Horak. And I'm Liz Marhenka. And you're watching this week's edition of Across, Across Campus. Campus. DJ Maximum. Have you ever seen the Amigas of the Finca Club name involved in fundraisers or selling something in front of the cafeteria and wondered if they're worth your money? Eric and I have more on this report. Hey, do you want to go see that Safe Haven movie with me? I think you should save your money for the donation at Mass next week. We never have donations at Mass. I know, but we're having one this time. Why? I don't know. Let's go find out. The purpose of Amigos de la Finca is to support the orphanage in Trujillo, Honduras, uh, to try and raise funds and to provide material support in the way of supplies, medical supplies, school supplies, and um, just let those, the children there know that, that we care about them and want to support them. It's a club to raise awareness of an orphanage in Honduras. What's your biggest passion in the club? That I got to go on the mission trip this past, or last summer. Um, just seeing the people was really cool, getting to meet them and um, become so close to them. It makes me want to stay close to them. And um, the students had said that it, the trip was, uh, had such an impact on their lives and that they wanted for the trip to, to remain with them. And I thought one of the ways that we could best do that would be to create that, that club for the purpose of supporting those children. And so that way they would always be in our hearts and minds. After his first trip to Honduras, Dr. Bob Iden started the club in 2010, with the mission being to support the orphans of the Finca Orphanage. Each year, the club tries its hardest to raise the most money possible to send with the next year's missionaries. But with the location of the mission trip moving to Nicaragua this summer, will the mission of the club change also? Uh, somewhat. Not much, though, because we're going to still be funding the Finca and everything. But um, we're going to be helping in Nicaragua as well with the churches and stuff. No, but the new missionaries who are going to Bluefields, Nicaragua, have already been uh, instructed to look for whatever the need might be there. And so Amigos de la Finca may end up supporting children in Nicaragua as well. And that would be good. Yes, in small ways, but we're still going to support uh, Honduras even if we can't go down there. Uh, we're still going to be giving money to the Finca, which they desperately need, sometimes even more than our labor force when we go down there. Uh, what events do you have coming up for the club? Uh, we're going to be selling headbands and t-shirts for the club that we make, and they're going to be like $5 each. We braid them, they're all different colors and everything. Uh, we have a dress down day that's going to be coming up on the 23rd, April 23rd, which is the day before our all, all school mass and um, members of the club will be selling dress down passes for about a week prior to that and that's going to be one of our main fundraisers of the year. Yeah, maybe I'll save my money for the donation. I'll just ask my mom for money. <laughs> Sounds like fun. This has been Lisa Marhenka and Eric Ramon updating you on the Amigos de la Finca Club reporting for Across, Across Campus. Campus. Eric, Eric, what are you doing? Preparing for war. Why? Because North Korea has been threatening us with bombs and stuff. Well, what are you going to do about it? I don't know. Let's ask John and April for more. North Korea has posed a threat to the United States by building and designing weapons to attack us. This rivalry has been going on since the 50s. Earlier last week, North Korea planned to attack us with their missiles. What has the United States done to protect us, and how will we react to this threat? Well, what do you know about North Korea attacking America? I know they're threatening to uh, send a nuclear strike over to major cities like Washington, LA, Denver, Austin. Do you think there is a viable chance that North Korea will strike the states or any of our allies? Um, no, not really, especially because their missiles like aren't really advanced enough to hit anywhere close to the U.S., just like the tip of Alaska, pretty much. Mistake. I don't think they're actually going to follow through on it. I think it's hot air. Why? America has the most powerful military in the world just by ourselves, not even talking about our allied nations. So if they attack us, they'd be off the face of the planet in about two days. 
North Korea has recently named a new ruler, Kim Jong-un. The Kim family has been reigning for decades, using a totalitarian government. He has designed strategies to attack the U.S., but has publicly shown several of these strategies on the internet. With this knowledge, our government needs to design ways to protect us. Whenever a new dictator comes into power, they need to uh, scare their people and make them think uh, that they're going to do things that um, they probably won't do. How do you think our government could protect us from any of North Korea's missiles? Um, just by like negotiating with North Korea's government because I feel like we need to talk to them, just kind of talk it all out. Oh, I know they're moving the, like, the missile defense systems from Poland that were aimed at the USSR to Guam to protect us against North Korea nuclear bombs. How do you think the U.S. would defend ourselves if we went to war with North Korea? Well, if they were to shoot anything towards the United States, I'd imagine we'd shoot it down. Um, if they would go after a battleship or a, an aircraft carrier or something, I'm sure that we would handle that as well. And do you think that we made the right move by sending our forces over there in case of an attack? Uh, yeah, because if they if they do attack America, we're going to want we're going to want some retaliation. Even though we are unaware if North Korea will definitely attack us, we must be aware of the situation at hand and we must be sure to keep our loved ones close. This has been John Avery and April Estrella reporting for Across Campus. You ready? Yeah. Well, hopefully we won't have to go to war. Yeah, hopefully. Thanks, John Avery, for the update on North Korea. Yeah. Eric, what was that for? It's the countdown to the seniors are out of school. Well, what are you going to do this summer? I don't know. I haven't really thought about it more. Well, maybe we should go see if other people have any ideas. Yeah. Taylor, Sarah, and Carlos have more in this report. With summer only a few short weeks away, how are students planning to spend their newfound free time? And how are seniors preparing for their next chapter in their lives? And what are some summer events that you know of? I'm going to concerts and just going and swimming and hanging out with people. Um, well, I'm going to a music festival in California at the beginning of summer. Uh, California Roots Festival and there's Warp Tour and a bunch of summer stuff. I think in a city like Dallas, you should use the summer as an opportunity to take advantage of all of the cultural events that take place. And what do you plan to do with your summer? Um, probably tan most of the time. Basically have fun in the sun. I'm looking forward to actually having a summer off this year because every year before I've always had football early in the morning workouts so I'll actually have like a free summer where I can sleep in and actually enjoy myself. The Arts District is a, just a hotbed of activity in the summer with lots of outdoor concerts and special gallery shows, um, the Dallas Summer Musicals in Fair Park. Um, there's so much to see and do during the summer and classes to take. You should be outside during the summer. I like using DART and going to um, the West End or the Arts District. Um, and I think that downtown, the evening programs are really fun to go to. And you can see free concerts by people like Erica Badu and other um, artists as well. What does this summer signify to you? Freedom. Perfect. Sleeping in, and no school. I think it's such an exciting time for seniors to um, take advantage of graduation activities and then almost immediately start going into the planning for the next stage of your life. Uh, the summer for seniors is about um, embracing what's going to come and letting go of whatever you're leaving behind. It's, it's a melancholy time for seniors, but so exciting. Uh, well, it's the last summer we have with like all our friends before we all go our separate ways and go to college. So it's, uh, it's like we're going to be like trying to spend as much time with each other as we can. So it'll be a lot of fun. The, the summer is going to be a lot with like towards the end of it saying goodbye to people and starting a new chapter of your life at college. How do you think students are preparing for summer? I don't know. I think at this time of year, students are mostly preparing for summer by um, trying to find summer jobs or catching up on schoolwork or just really catching up on rest. 
just to spend hours of doing nothing. That's what summer's all about. It's not summer quite yet, so finish off the year strong. And whatever your summer plans are, stay safe. This has been Sarah Wheeler, Carlos Ramirez, and Taylor Curtis reporting for Across Campus. Summer sure is coming up on us quick. Thanks guys for that report. And now it's time for the walk across. Thursday is a B-Day. There's a band trip and multicultural week continues, and the spring play is at 7.30. Friday is an A-Day. There's a multicultural assembly, and at 5 p.m., varsity softball versus Argyle Liberty. At 5 p.m., freshman baseball at Argyle Liberty. At 7 p.m., varsity baseball versus Argyle Liberty. And at 7 p.m., JV baseball at Argyle Liberty. And at 7.30, the spring play continues. Saturday at 12 p.m., freshman baseball versus McKinney North. And at 7.30, the spring play. Sunday is the Lord's Day. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Monday is a B-Day. Men's golf competes at the state tournament. At 4.15, there is a cheer tryout clinic. And at 4.30, varsity softball versus JP2. Tuesday is an A-Day. Women's golf competes at the state tournament. At 7.20 a.m., there is reconciliation and mass with Father Martin Moreno of St. Joseph. Wednesday is a B-Day. It is midday schedule. Tennis continues to compete in the state tournament, and at 11 a.m., all school maps with Father Tony Lackland of SMU. Okay. Thanks for watching this week's edition of Across Campus. We'll see you next week. Where the news is. Right where you are. Across, across campus. campus.